sounds weird. All right. This one. Hello. Hi there. My name is Brendan, and this is Accidental Origin, the weekly writing web show. How's everyone's week been? My week's been good. Doing a lot of things. Doing a lot of things. It's playing around with the lighting a little bit more. I don't really like this setup though. I kind of ran out of time. Uh, it's way too much glare off that back back wall there. Hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't actually make an outline today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I kind of ran out of time. <laughs> so I didn't make an outline today, but that's fine. Uh, I had a general concept for what I wanted to do for the episode. So we're going to continue with that. Uh, and I don't think, well, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've been having a lot of conversations with my friends who watch me stream. <laughs> I've been having much conversation with, with my friends who watch the stream about the format, about what I'm trying to do, the, the effect I'm going for. And it's been kind of up in the air because I, I started Accidental Origin as a teaching stream to teach writing from start to finish, to show the entire process, to show the, the bits that you don't usually get to see, the drafting process. The ideas, the brainstorming, uh, the sort of weird up in the airness that that happens with with writing, and I think I'm showing that. I think I'm showing elements of that. But there's also this giant section in the stream where I kind of lecture at you, and there's some interesting things there. Uh, but it's not all interesting. Not all the time, anyway. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, I mean, even last episode, when I started talking about intertextuality, like, I got super academic and just, and just went crazy off the rails there. <laughs> Which is fine, it's good to do those things, but, yeah. I I wonder I wonder if my issue is that in an effort to make it more approachable to to people who aren't familiar with writing, I'm actually making it less approachable. Like that that's kind of that's kind of the feeling I'm getting where it's almost like I'm trying too hard and because of that, it's it's becoming less interesting. So yeah, like like I've been saying the last little while, I mean, feel free to give me feedback. Send me a message, send me an email, whatever. Uh, contact info on the website below. There's, there's links and stuff. Uh, so feel free, tell me what works, tell me what doesn't. I, I wanna know, I wanna a, a, adapt change up what I'm doing so that it can be more interesting, both for me and for the viewer. Um, cause, cause like I, well, I mean, I didn't make a plan for this episode either. Right. 
Um, well, well, that's on. That's on your end, McKelly. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. <laughs> um. Yeah, cause cause I didn't make I didn't make an outline for this episode, but I'm not sure if me just rambling is coherent in any way, shape, or form. Because <laughs> uh, I have a tendency to do that. My thought process is hard to follow, even for me sometimes. So, you know, I'm trying new things. I'm trying to mix it up. I'm trying to bring a new attitude, element, theme, playfulness. I don't know. There's a word. I'm not sure which one it is yet. Uh, so yeah, thoughts I had, thoughts I had about streaming. I'm enjoying streaming. Streaming is fun. <laughs> it's interesting. The elements of live interaction is super cool. I want to use it more. I want my chat to be bumping. Um, <laughs> brain Dan. I kind of love that. That's kind of amazing. What else was I thinking? So what the blah blah blah. No no no. Silly face this time. Um Johnny and I were talking this week and I sometimes have a hard time expressing what I'm feeling. And I think that has a lot to do with my personality type and a lot to do with just just the way I am. Which is cool. I mean, we're all different, right? We all have different things. Uh, in a lot of ways, writing is my means of, of, of expressing those things, right? Um, and I do that a lot. I write a lot. <laughs> um, so there's certainly that. Uh, but I got asked the question of, of why are you streaming? What are, you, what are you trying to get out of it? What are you trying to do? And, and the superficial answer... <laughs> yeah, I really do. The superficial answer is that... I want to teach people how to write. And, and that's true to a certain extent, but that's not really the real answer. The real answer... Be real with your feelings, Biro. Be real with your feelings. The real answer is that I want to have interesting conversations about art and creativity. And I use the word art as in the arts in general. Uh, music, movies, writing, art, like visual art. I want to push people in their creativity and in their skills. Because I love doing that. I love pushing myself. I love, I love it when others... Uh, are challenged by the things I say and, and not challenged well yeah they, they, they feel inspiration from the things I say I guess is a better way of putting it you know they push themselves um, and there was one other thing what was the other thing let me just check this real quick Rolling up. Uh, and, and this is why sometimes having an outline really helps me. Um, where did that conversation go? Jesus. I don't even know. Wow. Where? It's gonna it's gonna bug me if I don't find it. <laughs> um. Alright, oh, yeah. And of course. Yeah, so awesome conversation about art. 
challenge people right in front of an audience to get feedback, to see what people think, to see what I can improve, how to improve my own skills. Um, yeah, Th those are the three things that I'm trying to do. And I don't know if the the regular format or the format I've been using is really effective at doing that. So here's me. I'm trying to change it up. I'm trying to change it up. Um, this episode is going to be entirely practical. I'm going to try. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try and uh, not divulge into theory at all unless asked. Um, if people want to me talk about theory, I will. <laughs> I have no problems with that. But uh, I, I'm not going to just like start off with theory and then show you examples. I'm just going to show you the examples. And you can ask questions. And feel free to ask questions, by the way. Uh, a couple of people have mentioned that uh, sometimes it feels like I'm hard to approach because uh, I'm, I'm kind of like doing my thing. And I, I'm cool. Ask questions, please ask questions. Uh, I put the new, uh, this thing here with the, the messages. Uh, I put that up there. So a people could see the people watching the VODs could see the chat and what I'm referring to a little bit more, but also because I spend a lot of time actually looking at the video preview more so than any other screen. Uh, I find it helps me. It helps me get a feel for what I'm doing. So with things popping up there, I'm going to see the chat a little bit easier and I'm going to try and respond to the chat more. Um, yeah. It's something that I wasn't sure if I wanted to do at the beginning. If I, I wanted to, because I post to YouTube and because of the, the way that it was kind of a lesson format, I didn't want to spend that much time, uh, like re like I didn't want to spend that much time interacting with chat, but I realized that that's probably the wrong way to approach this, that I want conversations to happen. And the only way they're going to happen is through chat. So. Maybe I need to be more open, play with it a bit more, challenge my own ideas. And Johnny also mentioned in the conversation on Discord that I was totally just scrolling through, uh, that sometimes it takes me a while to get back to a question and it does. So if you ask a question and I don't get to it right away, uh, please don't think I'm ignoring you. I will, I will get there, <laughs> uh, but I need to finish my train of thought or this is going to be an incoherent mess. It just, it just is. Can you imagine if I stop mid sentence every single time? Confusing enough as it is. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's okay, Mikael. Have a good one, man. So yeah. Thoughts I've been having. Thoughts I've been having about streaming. Um, next week, uh, just to talk about stuff that I kind of have coming up or am planning in regards to, to these changes and also just to uh, my life schedule in general. Next week, I am planning on doing a special thing because it's, uh, it's actually my birthday next week. So I'm going to be doing a special thing on the, the Sunday episode. Keep an eye out for announcements on that. Uh, I should have some special guests. Hopefully. I'm still working on it. But I, ho I hope that happens. Um, but then I'm on holidays that week from work. So I'm going to be doing uh, a daily stream for that week. I have to uh, nail a time out for when I want to do that. Because I'm not I'm not entirely sure yet. 
I think it'll be in the afternoon. Because uh, I don't really want to do evenings. But I don't want to jump around that much also. Uh, what I'll do is uh, in my Discord, I will make a... Uh, I will make a, a straw pool or something like that with sort of a, a general time slots sort of thing for when people think would be better. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I've decided. I will do that. Uh, yeah, I lost my train of thought there. So, I'm going to do the main drafting of Accidental Origin, or, sorry, of Accidental Origin, of the short story we're working on during that week. So that I can kind of get that done, and I don't have to spend, like, two months working on it. Uh, stuff like that. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping... Uh, this is kind of a trial for me too, for my skills in the way that I write, that having streaming it will keep me on task a bit more and I can get, be productive, be very productive with that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're gonna try it out, see how it goes. Um, yeah, so that's what I got upcoming. That's my plan. Nice, Ronnie. Um, yeah, and, and what I mean by drafting is I'm going to be uh, tippity-tapping out the first draft of the short story. Uh, I plan on doing one scene a day because I have six days and six scenes, so I, I think that's a good plan. <laughs> it sounds very reasonable. So, yeah, that's my plan. And, and feel free to, uh, to give me feedback if, if you think that there's something I can do better with that or if you have an idea. I'm all about creativity. I realize that, that like, I like ideas. I like ideas that challenge us. I like ideas that force us to think. I like ideas that sort of challenge the status quo in, in a lot of ways. Um, yeah. And, and because I'm that type of person, I try and be as open as I can to getting that from other people. You know, if I want to challenge people, then I have to be willing to be challenged. It's a two way street. It, you know, that's, that's the way it is. Um, so yeah, thoughts, Brendan rambling, more thoughts. <laughs> so yeah, um, so we're about 20 minutes in, which is cool. I like, I like having kind of an intro talky portion. It doesn't have to be theory, but just to kind of get off my chest what all the things that are going on, what I think, what other people have thought, feedback I'm getting. You're doing a good job of challenging me, Droni. You're just not challenging me in the ways that you think you're challenging me. <laughs> I mean, you challenge me when it comes to streaming and when it comes to format and uh, feelings and touchy feels and all those things that I'm not great at. <laughs> and, and you might be like, well, Brendan, how can you be a writer if you're not in touch with feelings? And it's like, no, I'm, I'm good with character feelings. I'm just not good with my own feelings.
so yeah does anyone like uh, I just open it up a little bit here if anyone has any uh, thoughts about anything I've just said or wants to ask me a question or whatever please do so um, yeah please do so Just making some notes for things to do later. Straw poll for drafting week. All right. So, in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to start working on some characters. Because why not? I mean, that's what we're here for, right? That's what we're here for. So, uh, because I'm not trying to do theory today, like, I'm purposely trying not to do theory, <laughs> instead of being all like, oh, what do you think, blah, 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 blah. Uh, character, blah, feelings, blah, uh, I'm, I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to start working on characters and show you kind of some research that I've been doing, uh, thoughts I've had, various things coming together uh, from, from all the weeks that we've worked on this. So, we're gonna start here. Siren. Uh, so I have open here. A, uh, ooh, that's not readable. Yeah, there's good. I have here, open here, a list on Wikipedia of Greek mythological creatures. And for those unfamiliar with uh, Greek mythology, there is a ton of, of, one-off creatures and a lot of stories. Uh, there's a few that are really famous, uh, such as uh, the Hydra. The Hydra uh, is really famous. It's in the, uh, the, the Trials of Hercules. Uh, the a couple others being the Cyclops from the Odyssey, the Sirens, uh, which we're going to come back to, and, uh, oh, what's the one? The one with the birds. The bird ladies? Bird harpies. That's the one. Harpies are super famous. And the gorgons. Uh, specifically Medusa, more than any of the others. But yeah, the Greeks are huge fans of mixing things with things. So there's a lot of, like, half horse, half humans and half human, half animals, and horse, human, fishes, and lion snakes, and <laughs> all kinds of crazy things. But the one thing I wanted to look at today was A, sirens, uh, because our main character is a siren, so that's totally a thing. Uh, B, it's not here right now, but I will pull it up at some point, is, uh, fawns. Because again, another character is a fawn. And then, where did it go? Uh, Ah, uh, here, these 
guys. There was another term for them, but what was it? Ah, it doesn't matter. I'll get back to it. I will get back to it. Greeks had a lot of time on their hands. Pretty much is the way it goes. So I'm just gonna pop this over to the other window for a sec. So the reason I want to have this this research open. What are you doing? What are you doing? There we go. Is because there are a set number of, of sirens uh, in Greek mythology. And because we're doing uh, a classical fantasy, it's <sighs> forming thoughts, forming thoughts. Because we're doing a classical fantasy, there's definitely gonna be some heavy Greek influences. Um, so it would make sense because sirens are almost immortal creatures. Um, that it, we should pick a siren of sorts. Um, yeah. And that's awesome, Drani. Uh, think about weird combinations and, and all those things is an excellent way to build characters, to build creatures. Um, there's, I mean, Jonah, Jonah Loeb, a, uh, an art streamer on here, talks a lot about the creation of the Rancor. Um, because he was heavily influenced by the Rancor. And the guy who made the Rancor from Star Wars, by the way, just in case you didn't get that reference, uh, I can't remember his name offhand, but he said that the Rancor was basically a cross between a bear and a potato. That's interesting, Kabagoo. Um, what do you mean by? Well, I guess what do you mean by that statement? <laughs> um, I think I get what you're saying, but I'm curious. I'm curious as to why you always go in in that way. Hmm. Elaborate. Elaborate and we will talk about it. Have conversations. So, siren. Siren. So... The sirens, I'm gonna write some notes. Well, you know what? We can do this. It's gonna be in focus. Uh, should probably zoom in a little bit, eh?
focus properly. It wants to focus on me. There we go. There we go. So sirens. Um, Like, my grain is always on the go. I never stop to think because I just want to get everything out of my head as quickly as possible, if that makes any sense. Just anything I write. I mean, that totally makes sense. I have a friend who does that. Um, we've, we've talked a little bit on stream about process and the weirdest thing about process is that it's so individualistic that everyone's process is different. And this autofocus is, oh my God. Uh, yeah, stay, stay, stay like that. So I have a friend named Sam, uh, who I talk about a lot because I work with him and we talk all the time. So, His process is very similar to what you're describing. He will sit and write all of his emotions or like all of his thoughts on a particular thing out. He tries to like get as much as he can, as, as fast as he can onto the page. And he's cool with that because for him, writing is a lot of a process about Writing is a lot of a process about constructing a story out of your thoughts. It's not so much for him, like it's not, he, he's not a planner. He spews all the stuff out and then he goes back with what it, all the little bits that he has and he starts building a story out of them. In a lot of ways, it's, him putting words on the page is his way of brain brainstorming. I don't know how it is for you and I don't want to describe how, how your process is, but perhaps, perhaps you need to be a little bit more like me. <laughs> Arrogant. Uh, wow. This camera, I'm going to go back to the main screen. Total, totally failed that camera is just not, Staying where I want it to at all. Ugh. So I used to be like that. I used to just want to write and not plan and just put as many words on the page as I could. And I found that I couldn't be productive doing that. Where for me, that just led to unfocused moments, moments of thinking. I mean, you see me right now, right? Me rambling and how there's, there's lots of blank space and thought space and, and unshaped thoughts coming out. So I found for me that the more time I spent thinking about it from the beginning, helps me not have to get blocked later on. If that makes sense. I go back and book it out. And I totally do that too. I just do it from, I do it from a different type of bulking out, I guess. Like for me, uh, my cousin, who's actually a writer, uh, she's a journalist. Uh, and I had a conversation about this one time where kind of one of the, like the best way that we've sort of found to, to, do, to write outlines and, and things like that are kind of, you start from one basic idea and then you expand. So, I mean, I need to, I need to show an example. 
So like, for example, if our, well, I mean, let's, let's talk specifically about this story. Cause it'll be easier. Um, in a lot of ways, you start off from a single sentence. You start off from, you know, uh, a billionaire loses all his money and tries to summon the demon he made a bargain with in order to escape his fate. Something like that. Right? Yeah, totally. Uh, the art prompts. So for me, what I do is I'll take this and then I'll expand it out. So this is, this is three things. This is billionaire loses all his money. He tries to summon the demon and he wants to escape his fate. <laughs> yeah, that happens. My, my brain works faster than my hands can type. So now what we have here is we start having the bones of an outline where we can just keep expanding. How does he summon the demon? What kind of bargain was it? He wants to escape his fate. How so? What is he aiming to get? What will he give up in order to get it? Um, how did he lose his money? Who did he lose his money to? All various yada yadas. But I find, I mean, I, I find for me that this, this, this sort of process, this process of, of writing something short and then making it bigger really helps me. It helps me stay focused better. Um, I can't do this view, man. I can't do it. <laughs> I hope, I hope that was, I hope that makes sense. I'm used to not making sense. Nothing makes sense, blah. Anyway. Uh, so the sirens are two to five monsters. They have, um, they are bird-like. They are mythological. Okay, I'm, I'm glad it made sense. Um, I get all paranoid when I get rambly <laughs> because I lose track of where I started. So I'm not sure that if I, like wherever I end it, it's really <laughs> where I need to end it. Um, it's, it's easier on the page. It's so much easier on the page to not do that. <laughs> uh, Bird-like voice. And there's a lot of things about harps and musical instruments. I'm just copying down details of uh, the general mythological stories around sirens so that I can write out a character profile of, of how I want this siren to be. Um, because knowing what your character wants and what they need and where they came from are all important are all important decisions in the creation process um, 
in order to give your plot significance. Yeah, I think that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I'm totally bad for that, Fabugu. I am bad for ending up on somewhere completely different. Interesting. Sirens were called the muses of the lower world. That's an interesting thing to note. Okay. So we're going to start out with a basic character profile. So what do you kind of expect in a character profile? Well, you expect age. You expect uh, physical description. Um, uh, I guess we'll expand on this bit. Go uh, age, sex. Race, height, weight, physical description, personality, likes, dislikes, education. I'm just writing out a general profile. Uh, not every single one of these is going to be relevant. Hey, DJ McNeil, what's going on, man? Put this up into uh, childhood, uh, teenage, uh, adolescent. That's better. And adult years. Okay. So obviously, this isn't going to be perfect for every single character. I'm just going to copy this a couple times so it's all there. Cool. I was just talking about process. Process is a hard thing, right? Because it's so different for everyone. And there's no, there's no one way that works. And, it, and it's a constant process of working on your process in a lot of ways, right? Like, I find I con I'm constantly experimenting. I'm constantly uh, adapting my process in new ways with every story uh, that, I, that I'm working on. Um, Feel free to talk about your process, DJ. I would like to know. Average, uh, average height, female, Greece. Yeah. So character profiles are extremely useful. Uh, they're a quick way to put out as much information about a character uh, as you can, sort of thing. Um, a lot of the information in the character profile is not going to be used in the story. And that's okay. Um, I've talked a lot about psychology. Um, and psychology is super important, important to writing. And it's super important to characters. Our psychology is all based upon the things that happened to us throughout our life, our experiences, our memories, how we dealt with situations, uh, all that stuff, and, and, I mean, decisions we make. So, in a lot of ways, 
if you want your character be, to be real, you need to detail out all those things. Those things that inform their character and their personality and how they interact with things. Your character's gonna feel a lot more genuine. Five foot five point two five, apparently. And I'll put that in metric for, for all you other people out there. Exactly. And it's, it's especially interesting because how, how a character looks can affect their personality, how other people react to their looks can affect their personality. And you can surprise people based on their assumptions that they make about a character based on their looks. Hmm. Yeah, that's cool. It's good to know I'm not crazy. <laughs> ah, this probably isn't useful as, as useful as I would have thought. Oh well. I'm just kind of going to try and hit some averages. Um, doing, doing some. Oh, hey, Stevie, what's up? Yeah, I gave you a sword. You're cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so a few people have just shown up. Uh, I'm basically just working on uh, some character profiles for the short story I've been working on on stream. Um, Uh, we'll say probably around, well, she's a monster. She can weigh whatever she wants. Let's say one, 180. <laughs> uh, so many things, so many things. Right, uh, so this short story is called Fear the Siren. It's actually a classical fantasy, which I don't know if that's a real term. I made it up. But the gist is, is that it's a, um, it's a fantasy story that instead of being told in a medieval European style setting is actually told in a mythological Greek style setting. Um... The reason it's called classical is because uh, we tend to refer to uh, the Greek heyday as the classical era. Um, so with that being said, it has a much smaller feel to it than uh, a fantasy epic. It is revolving specifically around, uh, pretty much around Greek mythological creatures and a lot of old ideas. Um, there is a Faustian deal that happens, uh, which is a, a folktale told from thousands of years ago in Germany. Um, stuff like that. But yeah, all fantasy. All fantasy, all the time. 
And yeah, it was totally inspired by a collective set of art prompts that I generated. Physical description, physical description. Interesting. Okay. Greek mythology is important. I always talk about Greek mythology. Well, I mean, I'm doing a classical fantasy. So Greek mythology kind of just keeps coming up. <laughs> and I keep going on about it. And Johnny goes, what are you talking about? Bruh. And I'm like, okay, I'll re-explain. <laughs> but yeah, I love, I love Greek mythology. I don't know as much about it as I probably should. I know mostly just just big things, more so than little detailery things. Uh, but you know, we get all there's also there's always something to learn. Yeah, and Sinbad makes perfect sense. Uh, Sinbad, um, Sinbad is really interesting because a lot of the old, old, old Sinbad stuff uh, in film is actually by the same guy who did Jason and the Argonauts. So a lot of Sinbad stuff is influenced by those themes. Uh, Jason and the Argonauts is, a, is one of the bigger Greek myth stories. Um, and there's a great adaptation by uh, Harry... Harry Harryhausen, who kind of revolutionized animation. <laughs> Sam Raimi. Cool. I, I like militaristic stuff. Uh, I don't know if you know it, but uh, I really like... Um, Matthew Riley's stuff, and I really like the, um, oh god, what's that guy's name? Richard, Richard, Richard something? I know it's here. Where are you? I hid it away somewhere. Oh, Rogue Warrior. That's up. That stuff's really good. Maybe that's just me. Um, mortal, approximately, we'll say she's roughly, well, how long did the classical era last? Interesting question, Brendan. Uh, not that classical period. Johnny is my good friend, Stevie. She lectures me on feelings. And uh, I constantly challenge her to do art. <laughs> um, 200 years? We'll say she's approximately 300. Cool. Physical description. Physical descriptions. Are you, am I friends with any of Twitch writers? Uh, funny you should say that. Uh, my friend Stevie, who just showed up, is also a writer. Though she doesn't really stream writing on Twitch. <laughs> um, so yeah. Let's go description. Other than that, uh, I don't actually spend that much time in writing streams. I spend more time in art streams, actually. 
because uh, that's kind of how I got into Twitch Creative, so I'm friends with a bunch of artists. I also find, well, maybe this is weird, but I, I find that when I'm on Twitch, I kind of prefer, prefer to branch out and look at things that I don't do so that I can learn about them more so than I do things that I can do. I don't know. Maybe that's a, uh, maybe that's a fallacy on my, maybe I should fix that. I don't know why this won't. Curses. Why, why do you do this to me? Oh, there we go. I got it. I got there. We got there. You should do both. I know, Stevie. I know. I should. I should. I totally should. Bird line feet. For those who are later to tune in, I have the Wikipedia entry on sirens and lists of Greek mythological creatures open so that I can uh, do some re do research on the go as we go. Um, I'm going to do education because it's not relevant. Um, where did the sirens come from? Does anyone know? Like, do we know what their origin is? Or... Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, so the interesting thing is, is Borderlands is actually filled with weird references like that. Um, I mean, the place is called Pandora, for, for God's sake. Uh, though I don't think the Sirens actually came from Pandora's box. Or at least not not what I see here. Uh, man, I, I totally thought <laughs> I totally thought that I had more of this thought out in my head. Than I actually do. Um, uh, <laughs> and there's the head.
Is this how I saw Earl characters? Uh, no. I'm actually challenging myself to do the thing that I don't do. I don't generally do this all that much. But it's a good way to do it. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, I, I might be really weird. Because I'm a premise guy, I tend to think of my characters in terms of uh, roles in the story. So like, I started off, I started off like, well, I mean, I guess, hmm, I'm trying to think of an example. Uh, so like, I would start off with something like the heavy or the soldier, um, or the siren main character, uh, the wise man like I tend to start off with roles more than anything else and then fill out those characters as I go I'm horrible at naming things like atrocious at naming things so I avoid it as long as possible <laughs> uh, yeah bad at it I'm, I'm not good with emotions though Stevie I don't do I don't do super well with emotions. I'm, just, I'm weird. I don't know. It is what it is. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love names. I'm just I I tend to sit on the name until I come up with something that I really think suits them. That, how could you ever get respect? Well, it's a good thing the siren isn't the main character. <laughs> good thing the siren is not a main character. Well, it's not the main character. She's a main character. She's not the protagonist. That's what I'm trying to say. She's not the protagonist. All good. I'm just gonna keep working away. Actually, I'll take a five minute break to refill my water bottle, and then I'm gonna come back. Try to stream for like an hour. So yeah, take a five minute break. We'll come back. So break time. All right. See y'all in a bit. <laughs> 